All right, so I've got the rear battery box here, which is going uh, where the gas tank was in the car. And here are the mounting straps, which are hooked into uh, the holes that I drilled in the in the edges of the box. Um, so there's one on each side of the box, which is going to hold each end of the module. Uh, that's going to press press the module up, hold it tight against this foam, which is uh, epoxy glued to the PVC uh, plastic sheet, which should prevent these modules from moving at all. So I just got all the connections routed into the rear battery box. So this one right here, uh, these four wires, small 22 gauge wires, those are for the BMS, the SIMP BMS system. Uh, these connect up to the balance boards on the three modules that are going to be back here. Uh, this is the main negative lead from this rear pack, and this is the main positive lead the two odd wires. And then over here I have the two coolant uh, hoses, 5 16 hose. And this is going to be the hot and cold coolant lines running to this pack. For liquid cooling and heating the modules in this rear battery box, I have these two uh, coolant manifolds I got from Zero EV. Each one originally has five connections for the coolant to flow uh, out of the manifold and into the modules. Um, but for the rear battery box, obviously I only needed three because there's only three modules in this box, so I cut it down to just three. And that's how these modules are going to be heated and cooled. So I got the first module in the battery box now. You can see the uh, positive connection here to the positive uh, terminal on the bottom module. And also the threaded rods that I talked about earlier to keep the batteries pressed up against each other. Uh, you can see the coolant lines running into the battery box, which will connect up to those coolant uh, connections. And then the BMS wiring will have to wire up to these connections for the SIMP BMS. So I've got the other two modules in the battery box. Now I have all three in this rear battery box. I got all the high voltage wiring done. Um, so you can see the two connections that are connecting the modules and then the main negative lead from this battery box out to the rest of the modules. Um, I tightened down these two straps which hold the modules in place and also for these threaded rods. Um, I put the, the nuts on, but I haven't tightened them down yet. Uh, I haven't done any of the coolant work yet, but that'll be next. Uh, same thing with the BMS wiring, still haven't touched that. So I have each end of the pack here. This is the main positive and the main negative for those three modules. I got my uh, multimeter here to measure the voltage. You see it's reading about 72 volts, which is exactly where it should be, 72 divided by 3. Uh, just on the, under 24 volts, which is where each of the modules are at. So that means all the modules are wired together correctly and reading correctly. So I just installed the coolant connections for this rear battery box. Uh, and you can see that these hoses look a little different than they did before. Uh, what I did was I put these uh, coils over them from coolants. They're coils that are meant to prevent the hose from kinking because when it's making these tight turns, this hose... Uh, was bending, was kinking, and there wouldn't have been any flow. Uh, but with this reinforcing spring coil, uh, there's plenty of flow, and the hose does not bend. I also tied both of the securing straps down with some knots that I couldn't untie even if I wanted to. Uh, so if these if these clamps fail, I'll, these these straps will still keep the modules in place. And I also tightened down these bolts. Uh, for the threaded rods that go through all three of the modules. So the last thing I have to do before uh, putting the top on and putting this in the car is I have to leak test this. Leak test the coolant fittings to make sure that there's no leaks. The way I'll be testing the coolant flow for this battery box is with this 12 volt Tesla coolant uh, pump from a Model S. And I have this hooked up to the main inlet connection for this battery box for the coolant. Uh, and then I have the outlet line line uh, running into this cooler that I filled with water. Uh, it's just tap water for now. Obviously when I'm installing it in the actual car, can't use tap water, but just for a quick circulating test, this should be fine. So I got the Tesla pump running, but I did change the setup a little bit. Uh, I just used the radiator that I'm going to be using. It's a motorcycle radiator. Uh, the radiator that I'm going to be using for cooling the batteries in the inverter, and I just hooked that up. I think the cooler just wasn't working super great as a reservoir, kind of too big. 
uh, too much volume to move. Um, so if you look inside, you can see that water is flowing through this radiator. It's being pumped by the Tesla pump. And when this pump isn't supplied a PWM uh, signal with these two wires, it just runs at 100%. So right now it's running at 100%, which is like 5,000 RPMs or something like that. So I just sealed up this rear battery box. I got the bolts in. There's seven uh, bolts holding this down. You'll notice that there's a piece here that bumps out a little bit. This is because I needed about half an inch extra clearance up on the top for the coolant hoses, the half inch coolant hoses for the cooling the modules, cooling and heating the modules. Um, so I had to cut out a hole in this and then add some layers basically. So there's a bit more clearance under this bit here. All right, so I've got the rear battery box here. This is the one that's going where the gas tank was, uh, right next to the car. And today I'm going to see if I can get this thing mounted. Uh, it's going to be tough because I have to basically hoist it up uh, about a foot or so to get it in position. Because the gas tank was elevated a good bit, you can see the, the open area in there is where the gas tank used to be. But it's a pretty heavy box, about 170 pounds or so. So I've cut up a bunch of wood to see if I can jack it up on my own. I have a jack stand, but uh, it's not it's not low enough to the ground to, to get under this thing. All right, so I've got the battery box in position under the car now, and I have my uh, jack here, low, low profile jack. Uh, the tough part here is gonna be getting the battery box up enough that I can fit this jack under. It's about three inches of clearance that it needs. So I'm gonna be using this wood wood board to try to pry up this uh, battery box so I can get the jack under it. All right, so I was able to pry it up enough with the wood and I also used this pry bar here, which was helpful. So I was able to get the jack under. Uh, now I'm, what, what I'm gonna do is jack it up a bit and then put some wood blocks under it that can hold it in place and let me jack it up more without it getting too imbalanced. Now I have that wood block under this one side of the battery box. Uh, I was able to jack it up and then slide that wood block under. It's right, it's supporting the, uh, the part of the battery box that holds the rails uh, that bolt it to the, to the car. So now I just gotta do the same thing with the other side, that other uh, area you can see. So I didn't film much of it, but the battery box is now all mounted up where it should be. Uh, on this side it's with the little hooks and then on the other side uh, with some bolts. It was a lot of work and very stressful kind of balancing it up there. I ended up using two jacks. You can see that other jack over there. Um, neither of them are actually supporting the battery box right now. It's held up on its own and it's in there very, uh, very well, very sturdy. It's not moving, not budging at all. All right, so I'm right now I'm under the car from the back of the car, the trunk, under the trunk right now. Uh, you can see how this battery box is suspended with these two straps right there that, that, uh, that jack is not uh, supporting it right now. You can see how the, and those two straps are connected to these wires that are bolted in. Uh, right there is one. And then right there is the other one. So those are bolted in. I put some uh, blue thread locker on them so they'll stay in place. Uh, but you can see, and let's see if this is hard to demonstrate, but you can see, I mean, this battery box is not, it's not budging. If it moves, it's because the whole car is moving basically. So it's in there pretty well. I'm very happy with that. That was the one, uh, that was the one thing that I really wasn't sure how I was going to do it or, you know, even if it was going to be something that uh, I could do really at home with uh, limited tools and, uh, yeah. So that's a big step. Uh, from here, it's pretty smooth sailing. Just a bunch of wiring and a couple more batteries that are much easier to install. So that's about it.